Greetings from the Aquavite project partners participating to the development of land-based integrated multitrophic aquaculture of low trophic species. As part of the Aquavite project that focuses on new species, processes and products to increase the production of low trophic species in the Atlantic, various partners from academic and private institutions are participating in land-based IMTA experiment that are taking place along the Atlantic Ocean, more specifically in France, Spain and South Africa. The preliminary results obtained during the first experimental stages focus on hatchery and nursery stages, as well as grow up processes and will be presented by the respective partners. This is Sylvain Chet from France Algetis. I will uh, present the work that France Algetis has been doing um, in the context of Aquavitae to improve the, the techniques for juvenile production under uh, organic certification. So in order to produce um, juveniles, we actually use a specific macroalgae called Urbilla lens, and we prepare plates in order to settle the larvae on. Plates are prepared in various ways, and, and we can only use the organic fertilizer before settlement because it, has, it is quite toxic for the, for the larvae once they are settled in the tank. To do that, we um, try to improve the, the, the settlement rate and the first growth rate of these larvae. And we compared the dosage and frequency of the organic fertilizers that we using. And we had three different doses. We also tried to prepare the plates in different ways. So we had a mechanical removal of, of the diatom biofilm that covers the uvula before settlement. So we, we scrape the plates or the other option is to rinse the plates or wash the plates with a high pressure hose. As a result of the mechanical preparation of the plates, when we scrape the plate manually, plates are cleaner than with the high pressure hose more fertilizer we use, the higher the protein content of the seaweed, the best settlement we're getting, meaning that the higher the protein in the algae, the better the settlement rate. If we look at growth and, and survival to 30 days, then the mechanical preparation of the ovella lens culture will also have an impact because removing the diatoms also have an impact in, the, on, in terms of nutrition for the, for the post larvae. If we look a bit further, we can also enhance or improve our production process of abalone juveniles by using IMTA techniques in the abalone nursery tanks. And to do so, we, we actually add several species in core culture. So we have abalone, anemone, some fish, and the ovilla lens uh, microalgae growing on the plates. The addition of these species have no effect or no significant effect on the juvenile's growth or survival, but this allows us to produce uh, an extra species that has some value in the gourmet restaurants. This was Sylvain Huchet from France Adiotis. Thank you for your attention. In Spain, the Ecoaqua Institute from the University of Las Palmas tested the effect of different feed on the Abalone Aliotis tuberculata cocinia production in land-based IMTA system in flow-through or recirculated condition, as well the, as the integration of sea cucumber within these systems. The abalone feeding experiment were performed to test the effect of sustainable vegetable and enriched protein sources provided by the IMTA produced macroalgae. And the treatments were tested in triplicates in 100 liter tanks with constant water flow in flow through or recirculated conditions. The feeding regime tested were commercial feed provided by Mary Feed, uh, IMTA produced fresh macroalgae and a mix of both. The experiments were performed with six months old abalone with 25 animals per replica. 
and the uh, results indicated that there was a high survival with no significant differences between treatments or systems. The animals fed exclusively the commercial diet presented lower length and weight than the animals fed uh, fresh macroalgae or the mixed diets in both flow-through and recirculated system. And generally, the animals presented higher growth when fed a mixture of fresh macroalgae and commercial feed in both production system tested. For all parameters, there were no significant differences observed for the same treatments between the two production system tested. For the integration of sea cucumber in the land-based IMTA systems, uh, individual uh, sea cucumbers were collected in the wild and stocked below abalone at two different density of 3.75 and 2.5 specimens per square meters and fed IMTA produced macroalgae or compound feed. That the sea cucumber density has a significant effect on the sea cucumber growth parameters with higher density negatively affecting growth. Uh, abalone feeding source also significantly affected the sea cucumber growth parameters, these being significantly higher for sea cucumber feeding on waste of abalone fed fresh mackerel. These preliminary results are of interest to demonstrate the feasibility to integrate sea cucumber to abalone grow up processes and offer possibility to produce additional species or products within the land-based IMTA system tested. Hi everyone, my name is Simone Falaki, a student of Rose University in South Africa. And I'll be giving a presentation on optimizing integrated multitropic aquaculture on South African abalone farm using farmed macroalgae meal. Marine Seed is one of the proud industry partners in this exciting project. And in a nutshell, in this case study, focusing on IMTA systems from Uva from Wild Coast. Farm here in South Africa, White Coast Abalone is the third largest abalone farm. The farm is also into abalone ration and seaweed production. There are two operating systems at White Coast Abalone. We have the IMT system and the non-IMT system. So what we did was so that we harvested macroalgae, a uva species to be preserved from the two operating systems. Uh, over, the hoover that we dried was subjected to power security measures. Five dry treatments was tested in all. We have a controlled treatment. We have the IMT treatment where we included 12% of hoover, IMT hoover meal. We also have the non-IMT treatment where we included 12% of non-IMT hoover meal. And we have two reference diets that are fed on the farm. Inclusion of hoover meal in the pellets of the animal increased their feed consumption rates. The pellet consumption and total dry feed intake was recorded for animals that were fed IMT and non-IMT uh, diet. Also, there was no significant difference uh, among the treatments in the protein efficiency ratio. However, the best FCR was recorded for the control diet. The result also showed that the Inclusion of uva in the pellet of the animal did not impact on their growth negatively. 12% inclusion of uva in the diet of the animal did not uh, impact negatively on their body weight to share electrician. And this study is still going on and it's due to end in April of 2021. From the current study, it was observed that inclusion of uva meal in the diet of the animal will never compromise their growth. Uh, this result will further strengthen the linkage between the macroalgae and South African abalone industry. Thank you very much for listening. Result obtained during the first round of experiments performed in the different geographical areas indicate the feasibility to develop innovative integrated process in land-based IMTA system using new species that are not affecting the production of the associated species. And the fact that these processes can be implemented at different stages of the production cycle and in a diversity of production systems operated under a similar integrated approach. The results also highlight the interest to integrate IMTA produced macroalgae in compound feed in terms of animal health and nutrition and as alternative to reduce production costs and develop sustainable production methods. 
Thank you very much for your attention.